all hooked up yet and worked out. We're going to work that out by Wednesday night for On the Air with Mike Allen. Uh, so you'll be able to call into the show and call in your opinions. We just sent a tweet off to Ryan, uh, Ryan Riley, Ryan J. Riley, who tweeted uh, earlier this week about some rubber bullets that he had found to, of course, create more controversy in the ongoing uh, disaster, which is the Ferguson, Missouri riots, where apparently uh, a way to get your point across is to go loot stores of businesses that have nothing to do with the riots. And of course, the store that actually uh, where where Mike Brown uh, was videoed manhandling the owner of the store has been targeted now for retaliation. So it's the store's fault that Mike Brown went in and stole $52 worth of cigars and beat up the store owner. Good news, which is not being reported, which kind of was leaked out, but uh, no one's really jumping on it, is that some of the protesters have taken up arms of private, privately owned firearms and are standing in front of these businesses between them and the looters, and they're protecting those businesses. Uh so that brings me right back around. And, of course, none of this is being reported by the left or the liberal media because, you know, guns are bad, remember? And nobody needs to have guns. And, and everybody's asking, well, where's the militia from the Bundy Ranch? Well, there's militia there now. And it's called the private citizen standing in front of a store with his weapons, keeping looters from going inside the store. And the cops, of course, are letting them do it because they need help. They're under attack from this media frenzy of misinformation and partial information that's presented as fact that's riling up this crowd that's putting people in harm's way. Because no one wants to sit around and get all the facts out. But anyway, we're going to get off that. I found something on the Internet I found interesting, and I just want to read it real quick. Uh, They are not happy. They're not happy in Gaza. They're not happy in Egypt. They're not happy in Libya. They're not happy in Morocco. They're not happy in Iran, in Iraq in Yemen, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Syria, in Lebanon. So where are they happy? Well, they're happy in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, France, Italy, Germany, Sweden, the United States, Norway, Holland, and Denmark. Basically, they're happy in every country that is not Muslim. We're talking about the Muslims. And unhappy in every country that is Muslim. And who do they blame? Not Islam. Not their leadership, not themselves. They blame the countries that they're happy in. They meaning the Muslims. And then they want to change these countries to be like the countries they came from where they're not where they're unhappy. Excuse me, but I can't help wondering how damn dumb can you get? Everyone seems to be wondering why Muslim terrorists are so quick to commit suicide. Let's take a look at the evidence, and this is kind of funny. No Christmas, no television, no nude women, no football, no pork chops, no hot dogs, no burgers, no beef, no bacon, no rags for clothes, towels for hats, constant wailing from some guy in a tower, more than one wife, which would make any man unhappy, more than one mother-in-law, you can't shave, your wife can't shave, you can't wash off the smell of donkey, you cook over a burning camel crap, your wife is picked up by someone else other than you, and your wife smells worse than your donkey. Then tell... (laughs) Then they tell you that when you die, it all gets better. Well, it's not like it can get much worse. And I just thought that was kind of funny. <clears throat> Find me on Facebook. Like me on Facebook. Find me on Twitter, Mike Allen, at Tired underscore Lions underscore Fan. Send me a tweet this morning. We already sent a treat, tweet to Ryan J. Riley, the gentleman who tweeted out that earplugs are rubber bullets. And, of course, it has gone viral, which, you know, in the end, uh, Mr. Riley, uh, don't feel bad about that. Don't be embarrassed because any any publicity is good publicity, if you really think about it. So nobody knew who you were before this. I mean, nobody. Nobody knew who Ryan J. Riley was before this. And now you are famous. And, of course, the attention span of the United States, or the attention span of the normal listener and normal uh, person watching the news is about 48 hours. So the once this dies down and people have fun with it, what I would do and my advice to you is embrace it. Embrace it. Just embrace it and say, hey, look, you know, in the heat of the moment, I didn't really stop and investigate that much. 
it happens. I apologize. I mean, it's not like you're the uh, you're assigned to the uh, uh, what was he assigned to the the justice. He writes about justice type stuff. The Justice Center for the Huffington Post, which is like uh, the Huffington Post is a uh, is an online uh, what do they call them social media type things. Like People Magazine and the National Enquirer. Yeah, that's a Huffington Post. <clears throat> that's what they're all about. Oh, my God, I got blow my nose again. Hold on. <clears throat> all righty. Well, I hope you all are getting some coffee in you. And that you're ready to go for the week. Uh, you know, what I've done is I've kind of turned off the news unless I need it for content for my show. I don't watch it every day. I watch Sports Center. I watch sports. I watch something else. I get most of my news off of a unbiased news uh, source, something like BBC America or even Al Jazeera sometimes, even though they're a little more slanted towards the Muslim uh, point of view. Uh, but the important thing is, is educate yourself. Educate yourself and weed through all the crap. That's the... That's the biggest thing. Educate yourself and weed through all the misinformation. And use your head. Use your common sense. It's almost like people want to react off a... You, you want to react off of a feeling. Where you feel mad, so you're going to react off that. Or you feel uh, upset about something, so you want to react off that. When In reality, what you need to do is just stop for a minute, back up, look at things objectively... And make a decision based on information that you can confirm as fact. And if, I think if everybody did that, if everybody just kind of slowed down and looked at things objectively and gave a uh, benefit of the doubt to the fact that whatever information they're getting at that time may or may not be the truth at that time, that you just need to back off a little bit, take a deep breath, and, and wait for the facts to become fact. Uh, in police investigations and, and the things that happen on the news, a lot of the time uh, you will be given information from the viewpoint of the political party that wants you to think a certain way. And it's unfortunate that it has come to the point where we as Americans and citizens have, n have stopped reading the Constitution. We have no idea what our rights are. All we do is we try to... Uh, you know, we are told what our rights are, and we just buy it. And I urge everybody, get, get online, go to Google, Google the United States Constitution, and read that thing. It takes about 45 minutes to read the entire United States Constitution, and then understand it. Maybe even get into the Federalist Papers. I mean, you can spend two or three hours on Facebook with all the Facebook drama and going back and forth and, and liking people and, uh, you know, reading about who, who had what for breakfast and all this other stuff. You can do that for hours on end, but you can't take 45 minutes and then understand what it's like, or understand uh, your responsibilities and understand uh, what it is to be a United States citizen. And it's wonderful. And then get educated. And then when you vote... Come this uh, November, when you vote, you vote, you educate yourself, and you vote accordingly. And I just urge everybody to do that. And you don't have to. I mean, you can live blind. You can just walk around in a fog. That's, that's, that's cool. But uh, knowledge is power. And knowledge is where we're going to get our country back. When we understand and we, and we know uh, information that can, so we can make uh, Decisions based on fact, not based on feelings. We can make decisions based on on knowing, uh, you know, making a, a good decision on who we vote for based on whether or not they're leaders, not just popular. I mean, I'm, I'm tired of people getting voted into office that are just popular. I'm tired of the press directing us towards presidential candidates who end up not being not being who we thought they were once they became president. Because we didn't do our homework. We didn't get educated. We don't know the facts. So get the facts. And I'm going to be covering this. This is going to be an ongoing thing here 
at uh, both uh, Monday Morning Brew and on the air, where I, I'm working to educate citizens. And I don't care if you're a liberal. I don't care if you're conservative. I, I'm conservative-minded, but I'm more individual sovereignty-minded. And I don't believe in no law, but I believe in laws uh, that are bu uh, built on common sense that direct a consequence to an action that don't dictate morality. I mean, it already says, that, you know, that murder is against the law. So why do we need all these other laws to basically designed to tell us how to think? You don't need that. Uh, you know, you, you can have too many laws. But first you have to educate yourself on the laws that exist now. That exist right now. And then educate yourself on what it is to be a United States citizen. I think it's a wonderful thing. And if it's, and, and you know, we we have to, you have to understand that as a citizen, how important it is to guard that citizenry. Whether you're born here and you're a citizen by birth, and you're and you're born in the United States, and you're, or whether you came here from another, another country, went through the process, became a citizen legally. And I'll call the United States your home. You have a moral obligation to understand what it is to be a citizen here. And then underst in understanding that, now you can defend yourself against all this other crap that's going on. Does that make sense? But be aware. Be aware of what it is to be a United States citizen and be knowledgeable in that. And that's something I'm going to continue with uh, throughout well, all the way up through 2016. And I hope by 2016, we can, as a nation, be educated enough to make the right decision and put somebody in office who's a leader who will lead us. And uh, what is a leader? A leader is somebody who tells you what you need to hear, not somebody who tells you what you want to hear because he wants your vote. That's the first red flag for me when I'm listening to these speeches from these politicians, which I, can, I can't even stomach half of them, is they're telling me what I want to hear. I mean, when Mitt Romney came out and he was talking to a bunch of uh, Mexican immigrant workers, he says, well, I grew up, I was a Mexican immigrant worker. No, you're not. You're a rich dude from Massachusetts, man. You're a rich guy. And you may have walked by some immigrant workers, and you may have lived in Mexico for a time as a, as a Mormon uh, uh, spreading your faith, which is totally fine. If you want to be Mormon, be a Mormon. But don't tell me that you're out there picking stuff off trees like an immigrant worker because you're an immigrant worker. You weren't. That's telling people what they want to hear so you can bond with them. Here's what I want. I want some guy that's going to tell me, or gal, tell me what I need to hear. We need to do this. We want flat taxes and term limits on our, our senators and congressmen. Get them out. Enough of this professional politician crap. Because all they do is they get up there and they have a six-year cycle of getting reelected. That's it. They don't do anything. <laughs> all they're about is getting elected. If you, if you really want to see what the inner workings of our government is like, go to Netflix. And there's a great series on there called House of Cards, and there's two seasons, and there should be, hopefully there's a third season. But that is pretty much our political process in a nutshell. And watch that. Just watch that, and uh, uh, you'll be appalled. And, and we, need to, we need to get flat tax. We need to get the IRS. We need to disband the IRS. Just get rid of it. Uh, it, costs, it costs more money to run it than it does for the taxes. To, and then the government can't, doesn't even know how to spend it. But now we're getting into politics and all this other stuff. But I hope I got you going for the week. Remember, uh, you know, when you wake up in the morning and take a stretch, all this stuff will still be here, whether or not you think about it or not. What you need to do is just know that today's a new day. And whatever challenges you have ahead of you, uh, you got to like you first. You got to feel good about you first. And it's all a decision that you make. So if, uh, if you think you're overweight, go exercise. If you don't think you're smart enough, start to read. If you don't think you're pretty, well, you know, you've got to decide you're pretty before anybody else can. And then go, live the, go, go start the day and go have a good day. And think positive. And even when something bad's happened, look for the good in it. You know, I think you'll be a whole lot better. And turn off the news, man. Turn off the news. Watch your shows, but turn off the news. Just stay away from it. 
it's all negative and it's it's not really telling you anything anyway. It's just telling you how to think. And once you break yourself away from that.